We welcome you back to Delaware Stadium, Newark, Delaware, the site as you are watching the CAA Men's Lacrosse Championships on Lacrosse TV. The second of the two semifinals putting Stony Brook, the Seawolves, playing in their first ever CAA tournament against the Drexel Dragons. The winner will take on the Delaware Blue Hens in Saturday's championship game. With that, we welcome you alongside Marcus Holman. I'm Travis Eldridge. Marcus, this is a matchup between two teams where it took overtime to determine it during the regular season. Absolutely. Two very similar teams. Tough, right? They have kind of firepower all over the field offensively. So, you know, if the first game went into overtime, we're looking for probably another one or two goal game here tonight. I can't wait. So let's take a look at the bracket and what this matchup means. The winner of this game Taking on Delaware, the top seed moving on with an 11-8 win over Towson in the first semifinal here tonight. As for this game, let's take a look at our players to watch. We're starting on the Drexel side of things with Sean Donnelly, who leads the way with 32 goals and 42 points this year. Yeah, he's the leader of this Drexel offense, right? Leads them in goals and points. He had five goals and one assist last time these two teams play, so... You know that Stony Brook's going to be queuing on him tonight. He can score in a different variety of ways. He's really good around the goal, and he's got good size as well. On the other side of things, Dylan Palanetti, first-team All-CAA performer, a 42-game goal-scoring streak. That's the longest in the nation. Wow, that's very impressive, and he's top 10 right now, averaging about three and a half goals a game. He had 18 shots in their regular season matchup, so you know Drexel's going to be queuing on him. Right, Just like most teams have, he's still found a way to produce. He's a really good lefty goal scorer, and he's going to be dynamic tonight. So the stage is set for those two stars to lead their teams as we are about set for opening faceoff here at Delaware Stadium. Stony Brook or Drexel going to find their way to the CAA championship game. For Stony Brook, this is a long time coming. This is a team that finished in the top couple in the America East standings last year. However, because of this move of conferences shifting from the America East to the CAA, they were not allowed to compete in the postseason. So this is two full years in the making for the Stony Brook program, and we are underway for postseason lacrosse for the Seawolves and the Dragons. Faceoff win by the Seawolves. It's David Mealy Estrella who comes up with it. And in those sharp red uniforms and the chromed out lids, Stony Brook gets the first possession. And and that's going to be a key tonight to watch, right? Even Coach Gallardi admitted that they've struggled at the faceoff X this year. You know, Drexel on paper has the advantage. So to see Stony Brook get off to a good start facing off is important to them. And it'll be interesting to see how they manage the emotional piece of this, right? Travis, you just mentioned, you know, they, they didn't have a chance to play in the playoffs last year. And now they finally have it. And, we're under the lights here and off to off the game number two tonight. On the wing, this is Blake Balin. Now Palinetti working for Max. Jump shot, a little high. Palinetti, <laughs> Will Palinetti Button. not shy off the bat. <laughs> no, he is not. Will Button, Jonathan Huber. That, that rounds out your starting attack unit. Balin, Noah Armitage, and Matt Anderson, your starting midfield. Here's Palinetti again. Gets it inside. That one off the post. Really nice look inside by Palinetti there. Obviously known for his goal-scoring prowess, but was able to draw a double team, jam it inside to Will Button. Drexel has numbers if they want it. And they'll settle down. This Dragons team comes in averaging a little over 12 and a half goals per game. They've been really good to start CAA play. They started the conference slate 4-0, including that overtime win over Stony Brook, and then they come into this tournament losers of two of their last three. On the run out of the midfield, that's Zach Augustine. Yeah, and this and this is a really balanced Drexel offense, right? You've got you know five guys with at least 20 points on their roster. Connor Hooley's a freshman that's been playing well lately number 10. And then you have Jack Mulcahy, right? Who 
was the CAA Offensive Player of the Year last year, has had a quieter year, but still very productive when he gets his opportunities. There's Donnelly. That hit uh, part of the goal, and so it resets the shot clock at eight. Good hustle play for the backup for the Dragons, so they keep possession. Yep, we've got our first dive out of the evening. Love to see that. First of likely many. <laughs> Augustine sends it to Semple. Max Semple, the sophomore from Coquitlam, British Columbia. They've got a man. Scandone flashes and scores. Jack Mulcahy sets it up, and the freshman Ben Scandone makes it one nothing Dragons. Actually, excuse me, was... it's another freshman. It's Connor Hooley. Yeah, I, I think the, the one looked like a little bit of a four there yeah. for you, but Connor Hooley on, on a nice cut. We see Mulcahy, who we spoke about a second ago, had his man hung up, so he's able to free his hands to feed. And we've got our first goal of the evening. Can't take that away from Connor Hooley. 20th goal of a really good freshman campaign. CAA all-rookie team performer. As it's Declan Mitchell at the faceoff X again for Stony Brook. He wins another draw against Justin Joseph. And another faceoff win for the Seawolves. He had to earn every bit of that faceoff win just getting beat up. Renz Conlon had been the primary face-off guy for Stony Brook for most of the beginning part of the year with Mitchell mixing in, but Conlon injured in the middle part of this season. They were hoping maybe they could get him back here for tonight, but it's been Declan Mitchell here in the first two face-offs for Stony Brook. It was Mitchell and Conlon who split duty against Joseph the first time these two met. This is Huber, and it looks like somebody got a piece of his stick, but the backup there for Stony Brook. Yep, and Drexel giving the challenge to Brennan Greenwald guarding Palinetti tonight. Number 35 in, in white there. Here's Palinetti in a drive upfield, question mark, just a little too tall. I like the way he's being aggressive early, right? He's... You know, some guys like to let the game come to them. You know, others like to go make it happen. And Palinetti seems to be more of the latter. They're looking for a pass in the middle there. Nobody home. And this will come back over midfield. At least I thought it did. Never quite went over there. I saw the ref get, saying it, it got tipped, right? You can see him up there at yep. the top of the screen. But the shot clock won't reset. And there you go. Uh, easy stop for Ross Blumenthal. And Drexel will set up an easy clear. Back the other way for the Dragons. That's Ben Scandone, who collects it around midfield. Second midfield unit out here for Drexel. Casey Waller, number two, Scandone. It looks like this will be Sean Curcio from the wing here. Back outside for Waller. As his hands free, and he finds the back of the net with a laser. Casey Waller with some heat on the run. He had those hands nice and low, like down by his waist. Kind of like loaded this thing up for a couple cradles here. One, two, three, and then lets it rip. Top shelf where Mama hides the cookies. Tell you what, that wasn't against the short stick either. The midfielder just straight up won his matchup. Yep, those second midfield line production goals are, are big. And wow. it's Mitchell! Declan Mitchell, the faceoff man. Not only does he win his third straight draw, but he scores in the process, and Stony Brook's on the board. Look at the lights shining off the chrome lids for Stony Brook. Declan Mitchell is fired up. Three straight faceoff wins and a goal. 
about as good of a start as you can ask for from the faceoff position for him. I mean, Mitchell took 183 faceoffs this year coming into today. He was under 50%, 45% on the season, but he has found something so far tonight. This one squirts toward the Stony Brook defensive end. Joseph trying to pick it up. Finally, Drexel does get a faceoff win as they get it to Charlie Maley. And now Semple will settle it down. And Justin Joseph, too, is no slouch, right? He's He comes into this game well over 50%. Yeah, 56% on this season. Grad student from Exeter, PA. Grad transfer from LIU, and he's had a really good season, made a big impact for the Dragons this year. Mulcahy working and shoots wide. Coach Gillardi talked this week in our coach's call, right, just defensively about, you know, familiarizing themselves with Drexel, right? Prior to this season, you know, they weren't conference opponents. So, you know, getting to know each other better, right, as Drexel steps in the crease and turns it over, right, is, is important. You know, he, he mentioned a guy like Jack Mulcahy, who you watch on film, is such a dynamic playmaker, but you don't realize – you know, the size of specific guys until you get out there and you're on the field level together. So he said that, you know, it'll benefit his players, probably more so his defensive guys getting used to, you know, offensive players' movements as this rivalry continues to grow now that Stony Brook's a member of the CAA. Yeah, when in getting ready for that first meeting, it was kind of head-scratching that the, these two programs had never met before just because of the proximity and, Long Island, Philadelphia thing. You figured maybe at some point in the non-conference they would have had to to meet up, but outside of maybe a scrimmage where they were on the same field in the same group of games, they just had never met up until earlier this season. Yeah, I would have not gotten that right in a trivia question. Oh, back Great. door. He's got him. Jonathan Huber and somehow a beautiful pass that gets all the way through, and we're all tied at two. Coach Gallardi also this week praised the midfield play of number 51, Matt Anderson. He said he's one of the best dodging middies maybe in the country. And his growth as a young player has been really impressive to watch. He said he got to work when he got to campus. And there you see taking a pole underneath, eyes up, and throwing a dart to the back pipe. Anderson... You know, reigning co-offensive player of the week with five points against Hofstra last Saturday night. That was a must-win game for Stony Brook after Towson beat Delaware earlier in the day. It came down to Hofstra and Stony Brook for the final spot in this CAA tournament. Stony Brook actually kind of jumped into control of that game. However, uh, Hofstra made a run late to make it a one-goal game at the end. Stony Brook holding on for the 11-10 win and to punch their ticket here to the CAA tournament. This is Will Button. Quickly makes the move, shoots high over the bar. Just like the pace right now, both offenses, obviously Stony Brook's had the ball a little bit more, but guys challenging their matchups, right? Kind of that three-second rule, right? You make a hard dodge. You got three seconds to make a decision with the ball. Either you're shooting or you're moving it on to a teammate. Wow. Good luck. On the backside, it's Button. This time he cashes in, and it's 3-2 Stony Brook. They've got their first lead. And that was, I think, Caleb Pearson, 53 on the invert. Yeah. And a very similar goal to how they just scored, right? They're just having their eyes up and throwing the ball to the back pipe. Drexel's got to do a better job of just getting down and supporting the crease, right? You want to leave the furthest guy away from the goal open. So if that means you need to slough in and protect the crease, that's what you've got to do. Joseph was able to win that clamp. Now can he win the ground ball battle? He does. We saw this in the first meeting, though. Stony Brook making just everything difficult, including 
the clear of essentially the clear of the face off. They're leaving Joseph trying to make a decision, and this decision is to give it up to Connor Hooley in the offense. Yep, those are just like the small, you know, one of thousand, five thousand battles that you have in a lacrosse game, right? Like, okay, it's a face off. Who wins the clamp? Okay, here's another battle is, you know, harassing that guy, getting your stick in his gloves, making the next pass really, really tough. All right, here's another battle. Like, can we get a stop in this six on six possession? So, the more battles you win, obviously, hopefully you can win the war. Second midfield of Waller, Curcio, and Scandone back on there for Drexel. Lefty, you hear the sideline, Stony Brook. Lefty, lefty. Just reminding oh. <laughs> our defense. Hey, Curcio. D-mids need, need all the help they can get, right? Sometimes we had we had guys right the hands of players with Sharpie on their wrists. That was remember. Hooley with his shot that bounced away. Rebound now scooped up by Drexel. They got the fresh 60, so they'll settle it down. Connor Hooley, by the way, coming off a career day. Six goals for the freshman in the win over Monmouth to finish out the regular season. Marcus, you scored six goals as a freshman? Uh, no, I did not. <laughs> not you many know, people do. That's, no, a, that's you, a big number. Very true. You know he's going to be playing with some confidence and hopefully he can get one or two tonight. Here's Scandone. Looking inside. They're trying to find Hooley again. This time it is covered up. Jameson McLaughlin helped out, and now it's Melia Estrella going the other way. Simple, maybe just with a little bit of a force there, jamming in the crease, right? Coming into the <laughs> into this game with four assists on the season. Might be better maybe just to swing it to somebody else on the wing and let them yeah, have the four, opportunity. Four assists on the season, and two of them came against Stony Brook in that first meeting. <laughs> yeah, I remember that, actually. We were like, who is this guy? Wow. There's Jonathan Huber. He's got his second, and it's four straight for Stony Brook. Stony Brook doing a really nice job in the sub game there. You can kind of see at the bottom of your screen their LSM carried over the midfield line. That was Christian Loud right there at the bottom, and that's Mulcahy guarding him, who obviously is not very familiar with the defensive package on that end of the field. And they were able to just kind of get Drexel out of sorts. And then an awesome shot from Jonathan Huber back to the goal, buries it. Mitchell, another face off win. He gives it up this time. Huber with a rip. He checked. I mean, why not? <laughs> By the way, the first meeting you mentioned, it was a overtime thriller, 15, 14 in that game. No team led ever by more than two goals. That is how close it was throughout. Yep, just back and forth. Two-goal run, then a three-goal run, then a two-goal run. Well, there is a five-goal run for Stony Brook. Blake Balin rings the bar, and it's 5-2. to two. Blake Balin coming into this game, very balanced season for him. 19 goals, 19 assists. You could see there, I love that hesitation, kind of that rocker step, right? Sees where the slide is coming from, gets underneath his guy, gets to the middle of the field and finds Pater. Well, Drexel needs to talk things over. Five in a row for the Seawolves. They lead 5-2 here late in the first quarter. The CAA men's look. Back to Delaware Stadium. Remember to follow Lacrosse TV on social media. We've got all kinds of great content for fans to enjoy. You'll get news from the lacrosse world, including game highlights and interview clips. Follow at Watch Lacrosse TV on Twitter, 
Instagram, and Facebook. Back here at Delaware Stadium, it has been a flurry from Stony Brook. They trailed 2-0 as Drexel struck first, but now five unanswered goals. And the Seawolves lead 5-2 here in the second semifinal in the CAA. Winner of this one will take on the top seed Delaware on Saturday. And Marcus, uh, Declan Mitchell has been terrific so far here at the faceoff X for Stony Brook. Yeah, no doubt. Coming into this game as a question mark, right? He's just been a, a an energy spark for them, right? Scoring a goal, getting the sideline pumped up. Of course, as we mentioned him, he loses <laughs> faceoff, classic announcers jink. But the other thing we spoke about, Travis, obviously with Stony Brook coming into this game, you know, having been, you know, not offered a, a postseason opportunity to play, and how would they deal with that emotion? Obviously, they're using it to fuel them. They understand what that stake here, right? A win tonight and you get to play for a championship and then a, a birth in the big dance. So now it's time for Drexel to settle into the game. They've got to get their offense going. I think they just need to tighten up their defense as well and help each other out a little bit better. Nice Good goal. look inside. Sample just a little off. They give Donnelly the backup on that one. I like the way Casey Waller is moving for Drexel, number two. He's shifty, got a nice burst. Really good look inside there to Semple. This is Mulcahy on the wing. Spins back to the right hand. Pass or shot got deflected on its way through. Dan Mulcahy. Newton will give him the, uh, the, the soak shot off the shin there and the GB. Look at that. Get it to Michael Sabella. And Sonny Brook will have a chance to clear this. They do just that. Whoa. Here comes Anderson, full head of steam. Palinetti off, I think, maybe the goalie and the bar. Something. Maybe a shoulder. Yeah, it, that, that took a pretty sharp deflection. Palinetti did not shoot great in the first meeting. And he's not off to the best start, but Stony Brook is. Still taking good shots. You know, and it's it's cool to be able to do these games back to back and, and just compare and contrast the styles of teams. Like I think Towson and Delaware are a little bit more deliberate in how they play offense, kind of like want guys to be in their spots and then everybody goes together. I feel like Drexel and Stony Brook just kind of run at you and they want to take as many shots as possible. So just liking the pace right now to this game as it Stony Brook's man up here. I'm not quite sure what the call was. Yeah, there was a penalty here on the field. So Stony Brook's man up unit going to work for the first time, but somebody stepped in the crease. It gives it right back to Drexel, and they can kill off the penalty. It was an offside call at midfield on Connor McVicker on Drexel. Just a 30-second man up for Stony Brook as they almost force a turnover at midfield. Mulcahy comes back to get it. And now they can get this thing back to even strength and go back to work offensively. Luckily, we couldn't really see who stepped in the crease for Stony Brook, so we will not bring your name up on the telecast. That's a tough, tough penalty to have when you're on the man-up unit. Yeah, that is a killer. Here's Luke Tomac. Speaking of guys who are killers for opposing defenses, Tomac... Having a great season once again. Second team all CAA performer after missing all of last season due to injury. Redshirt sophomore out of New Haven, Connecticut. Moving. And we get a moving screen. Yeah. yeah. Uh oh. And Donnelly must have said something to the official. It seemed like he Donnelly turned and looked at the ref there, and then the ref did not like whatever was said. So let's see if we can get the call here. Yeah, I think you read it correctly. It's Donnelly who is jogging his way toward the box. No, actually, I don't think they got Donnelly. I think he thought he might have gotten it. Because <laughs> he went right toward midfield. 
whatever, whoever it is, it'll be another man up for Stony Brook, who's right around 40% on the season. Interesting. I wish we could maybe have the refs mic'd up. Would have loved to hear what the uh, official call on the field was, but look out. Six on five for Stony Brook. Huber, Palinetti has the top of the box. Button. Moving along, Huber wide. Anderson gets the backup. Their stick work is sharp, Travis. These guys are slinging the rock. Palinetti off the bar again. Took him to the second half in the first meeting to continue that goal scoring streak against Drexel. And we're back to even strength. Here's Anderson on the wing. Nice shovel pass, and he's got Armitage. That is gorgeous. Anderson going into his bag of garden tools, pulling out the shovel, and feeding the crease. Operating from that same spot he had his assist earlier. Look at this little backhand flip. And Armitage knows exactly what to do with that. Buries it near side. Stony Brook is feeling it right now. I mean, that is six in a row for Stony Brook. Putting up a big number in this opening quarter. Good ground ball play for Drexel to win that face off. The offense can hold for one here at the end of the quarter as time winds down in the opening frame. Waller. Down under 30 seconds to go in the quarter. Scandone. Curcio now. Looking for somebody inside. Samples cover. They got Waller on the skip pass, but... McLaughlin goes low for the save. I think they got him, though, then on a push. Trying to clear out space for his teammate. That was an awesome look and a great save by McLaughlin. One more chance. Shot wide. We do give Drexel the backup here to Semple. And the first quarter comes to an end as Semple finds the side of the cage. What a by Stony Brook. They finish the quarter on a 6 nothing run. They lead 6-2. to two. You're watching the CAA Men's Lacrosse Championships on Lacrosse TV. A full moon over Delaware Stadium tonight. The second of the two CAA Men's Lacrosse semifinals. Delaware had the hard hats out for the first one. And the Blue Hens are headed to the CAA championship game for the second year in a row. Now the question is, who's going to join them? Stony Brook or Drexel? The Seawolves off to a good start. They lead 6-2, to two, and they will get the first possession of this second quarter. Travis Eldridge, Marcus Holman back with you. Beautiful night under the lights at Delaware Stadium. Noah Armitage, who scored in that opening quarter. Part of this first midfield unit for the Seawolves, along with Blake Balin and Matt Anderson. All three of them with points already tonight. Anderson back to Armitage. Noah looking for some space. Now they reverse the ball to Anderson on the far side. Brook doing a good job just sharing it, keeping it hot. Got their defenseman hung up. This is Button. Huber has space and another one. Make it seven in a row. Huber finding that off-hip spot. Travis, you mentioned it's a full moon, and the Sea Wolves are harnessing that energy. 
playing some great lacrosse right now. That's about as good as an offensive possession you can get, and it ends with Huber getting to his sweet spot, burying the rock, and then selling in front of his bench. Let's go. Dare I say they're howling at the full moon. A <laughs> three-goal first half already for Huber. He's got a hat trick. And another face-off win for Stony Brook. This is He's, loud. He'll take oh. it. And Huber will keep it from going out of bounds. That's a good why not shot for Christian Loud. Yeah, Seven I mean, goal run. Why not? Yeah. <laughs> it's a team heat check. Yeah. Palinetti drawing that matchup with Colin Gukwa. Drexel just needs one stop here, one at a time. Get some momentum going your way. And that there you skip go. pass to nobody in particular. And here come the Dragons. Nice pick off there by Connor McVicker. Staying on the field here. Maybe play some sub games. Looks like they're going to run to the box. I think McVicker thought about it for a second as he got right around midfield. But it's Donnelly who goes to work. Ah. Excuse me, Mulcahy in his pass just intercepted by McLaughlin again. Oh, Chamo shaking guys out of their shoes. Something, uh, you know, Coach Volker brought up to us, Travis, was obviously their Drexel's turnovers, right? And I think sometimes when you have a great face-off guy, it can kind of mask some issues that you have with turnovers. And right there, you know, Mulcahy just a little bit sloppy. Got to be tighter to the detail. So the Sea Wolves will have a chance to continue this run. It was 2 nothing Dragons. Stony Brook has scored seven in a row. Back to Huber, his shot wide. Palinetti there for the rebound. Puts it back in front of the cage. Anderson's shot never got through. And it comes back into the crease of Blumenthal, and the Dragons will start the clear. Blumenthal and McLaughlin each with four saves so far here tonight. Really haven't called Sean Donnelly's name for Drexel, right? Other than that kind of moving pick altercation with the ref. He's been relatively quiet, just one shot. Yeah, I mean, the the big guys for Drexel's offense, Donnelly, Mulcahy, Tomac, Semple, none of them with a point yet. Here's Tomac trying to change that. Circles back, Ooh. shoots just wide, and they're not going to have a backup. Dive. Unless Semple beats it, no. It's Melia Estrella. That was a good opportunity for Tomac. Kind of rocker stepped his way right up to the island, had his hands free. Just missed that near side pipe. Here's Palinetti. Palinetti just always a threat. That's what I love about his game. Like you never really know what he's going to do. He might just challenge you one on one. He might go at any time. Here he's being deliberate about it. Yeah, I mean, if you're going to score in 42 straight games, you got to do it in a whole bunch of different ways. Yeah, no doubt. He's got Gukwa hung up. You know, he's just pointing out some stuff, and they got lost there defensively for a second. George Carippo and Gukwa, there was a split second where Palinetti had the hands free but couldn't get a good shot on. Nice job utilizing a pick there, right? He's... Knows his strength, right? More of a goal scorer than a feeder. So instead of trying to feed for Max, he wants a pick to get his hands free. Wow. Another one for Stony Brook. Make it eight straight. Getting into the scoring act is Richie DiCario.
And just his third goal of the season, little right-to-right -right split. Call that a hash move because you're utilizing that fo football hash mark to kind of guide you up the field. Shoots around his defend defender with a another Stony Brook goal. Richie DeCharo, I mean, when everything – it's just it's, everything's falling. doesn't matter who's out there right now for Stony Brook. Finding ways to find the back of the net as Joseph comes back to – Get a face-off win. Drexel desperately needs a goal. Big time. They, they need some motion here. It, they're just only 13 shots, right, to Stony Brook's 21. So good pick. Waller. Back across the top of the box. He already has one. That one out by Jamo. McLaughlin read it off the ground. Maybe just a little bit of a force there from, from Waller, who I praised earlier. It's tough, though, right? You, you, you know, time's, you know, not a factor yet, but you're just looking at the scoreboard like, dang, we got to make a play, and – you know, maybe you just force a, sh a shot that's a little bit outside your range. Now you're playing defense again against a team who's just clicking on all cylinders right now. This offense is just red hot, matching their jerseys. Button. Draws the matchup with McVicker. Ooh. Oh, what a move. Good pass, too. Give, give it, it go. go. He's got Holy it. Holy cow. Wait a minute. The officials, they're going to make sure he wasn't in that second crease, the goal mouth. Come on. You got to give it. Oh, my God. Are uh, they going to call? Will they count it? Yeah, they do. They give and go. Works to perfection. I mean, that is pretty lacrosse. Yeah, that should not be a flag or... He stayed out of the goal mouth. Yeah. What a play there. That was really cool. <laughs> Will Button with the juke, and instead of taking the shot, kicks it to his teammate at X and then continues his cut. I love that. I believe it was actually a foul on Drexel for a push as Button came sliding in. Drexel with a big face-off win here to try and, again, just all you're looking for is a little bit of a momentum play, and you got to stack them on top of each other. So big face-off win there for Joseph. Yeah, sorry, no penalty. We're even strength here. Yep. Mulcahy. Augustine. Nine unanswered goals for Stony Brook. Yeah, it's... <laughs> Drexel just can't get anything to stop the, the bleeding right now. That was Another nice save. Yeah, McLaughlin going McLaughlin. low. Quiet six saves for him. We're at the midway point of the second quarter. Drexel looking for their first goal since we were less than five minutes in. Tomac oh. off the bar. Good offense. Holy to Tomac. Oh, my gosh. Just one Re of those days. Rebound comes all the way this way for Stony Brook. Button decides to take it all the way back at X. No numbers for the Seawolves. Smart to just pull it out, get your offense on. You, you've been clicking. No need to force it in transition. When you see Stony Brook going with this, you know, we call it a 55 where you're playing five on five. 
because you're playing the sub game and now they've got Mulcahy trapped on the defensive end of the field. So a win in the sub game for Tony Brook. Palinetti. Ian Button have it behind the cage. Saw Button work that magic on the give and go. That one bounces high. Palinetti falling Ooh. away. Nice stop by Blumenthal. Little fadeaway jumper there from Palinetti. Blumenthal was all over that. Can Drexel get one back? Maybe I mean, this is an now. offense yeah. that can put up goals. We, we saw it in the first meeting. These two teams had stretches where it didn't feel like anybody could get a stop. Mulcahy diving across. Another game by McLaughlin. McLaughlin sliding to that off hip. Big time save on the doorstep. Nice hustle by Semple. Watch the hidden ball. Semple's got it. It's Connor Hooley in on that. Right back as well. Semple goes right to the cage. Another stop. McLaughlin heating up and, and just closing the door on this Drexel offense. Man. Tell you, we expected Stony Brook, obviously, to play with some emotion, Travis, but I don't think you or I would have predicted nine straight goals in the first half for them. No, this is this is big-time stuff. This They are sharp tonight. I mean, you can... You can tell that not only do they come up, come in fired up, but they come in dialed in. Yep. Winners of two straight took care of Fairfield and then Hofstra to finish off the regular season. Huber beats one, now bounces it past the goal. Just under four minutes remaining in this first half, all Stony Brook. And if, if you're Drexel at this point, it's almost like, oh. No, there's another. Make it 10 in a row for the Seawolves. This time it's Blake Balin. He's got two. What I was going to say is, you almost know, just want to get into halftime and go back to, you know, some adjustments here for your defense. But Balin up the hash. Looked like Blumenthal might have been screened a little bit. I don't think he... Got a good read on this one. Just one that he might want to have back. You can see him frustrated there. Stony Brook, feeling it. Timeout for Drexel. They want to talk things over as Stony Brook has it going. They've scored 10 in a row. And while this is Stony Brook's first ever CAA tournament here in their first season in the league, their head coach, Anthony Gallardi, certainly knows this league well. He was a... Longtime assistant, spent eight seasons with Towson, won five CAA titles as an assistant for the Tigers under head coach Sean Natalin. So he knows this conference about as well as anybody. So this is not new for him. It's just a welcome back to the league. No doubt. He, he's very familiar with it. You know, his goal as, as a coach this year was to get his players familiar with the style and, you know, with the personnel. So he's, he's certainly done a nice job with that. You know, it's funny, you know, he talked about, and Coach Volker did as well, and we mentioned earlier with the De Delaware Towson game. Just like, you know, we we lose UMass out of the CAA, but you bring in Stony Brook. Very, very similar styles of just skilled players, but ultimately toughness is just at the core of of these teams' DNA. And you know, Stony Brook definitely playing with that tonight. As you see, a frustrated defensive coach Tucker Durkin for the Drexel staff. Yeah, I mean, you know, you probably, first of all, would give anything to get out there right now as a coach on the sidelines with how great he is as a player in the PLL. But this is a defense. They just, they have not figured out how to stop this Stony Brook team. Yeah, and and Coach Volker admitted that. You know, he, he said it's probably going to be a high-scoring game tomorrow night. And, um, you know, we've we've 
obviously, you know, they're not getting as many stops as they would like, but unfortunately for them, they're also not putting a lot of goals up on the scoreboard in their end. And, and honestly, that is the difference between yeah. what we saw in the regular season, and what we've seen tonight. I mean, the two teams traded goals for the majority of the game a couple of weeks ago. This has just been Stony Brook dominating. Yeah. And a, l- a little bit of a, uh, PLL coaching staff chess match with Mike Chanichuk, the offensive coordinator for Stony Brook, and Tucker Durkin, the defensive coach for Drexel. So two great professional players that have had incredible careers. Advantage King Chani, but here, advantage Luke Tomac. Gets Drexel finally back on the board. It ends the 10-goal run. He's got his first of the night. And that's huge, right? You call a timeout gather yourself, you know, control your emotions. You win a face off, you come right out, sweep to the middle of the field and score. Tomac with a huge goal there for Drexel. Second team, all CAA performer. Six games this season with four plus points for the redshirt sophomore midfielder. And now Joseph wins a draw forward. Joseph heating up a little bit. It's a good sign for Drexel. If they can just Capture some little plays here. Maybe get two more goals in to cut this lead to five. You know, with the dynamic faceoff guy, you're you're definitely not out of this game. But you got to certainly win this these next three minutes and get some momentum going into the half. Yeah, Joseph has now found himself back over fifty percent here in the first half. So he's figured his thing out after a hot start. As Tomac is heating up, there back go. to back goals makes it ten to four. Tomac with two straight from his bread and butter spot, that high righty wing. Drexel just with a stack look with their midfielders. Dodge the alley, throw back, hit your shooter, and shoot it high to low from 10. Kind of a very similar goal that he just scored. That's, you know, side, kind of quarter sidearm release to the five hole. On McLaughlin, I think Stony Brook just took a timeout. Yeah, Anthony Gallardi knows how fast this can start to roll downhill. He wants to try to pawn some of that momentum, almost like what you see in basketball with these yeah. runs. Yep. And so Stony Brook wants to talk things over. Luke Tomac, by the way, back as a freshman in 2021 as part of that CAA championship team, had a huge game of the championship game of this tournament. Two goals, three assists, and the win over Hofstra for five points. So a, a nice bounce back for him after missing all last year due to injury. He's been really good this season and picking up where he left off the last time he was in this tournament. Well, with this timeout, we're going to step aside. It's Stony Brook 10, Drexel 4, under three minutes to go here in this first half. Never mind. We're going to keep it right here. Under three minutes to go here in this first half. Back to the face-off X. Declan Mitchell back out there against Joseph. See which way this is going. It's going Drexel way, Drexel's way again. Here we go. Three straight will be huge. We get one or two more here. Certainly makes this a manageable game at the half, yep. despite the fact you gave up 10 straight goals. Yeah, no doubt. And I like that they're just staying with what works, right? This kind of stack look. Fading Tomac out the back. Here he is. He scored two in a row. Watch out. He's got help I'm coming. I'm out. Uh, I think drew a flag. There's a flag down, so it's going to be a man up for Drexel. Free possession. Backhand shot is wide. But now we'll get the penalty. 
Stony Brook timed that slide up really well. I'm not exactly sure who the defender was. Perfectly timed, but unfortunately just a little too heavy with the, the slaps there. I think it was Riley Hagerty, number 47, who came over to help. I think we, if I saw this correctly, Stony Brook had nine penalties against Hofstra <laughs> on the Battle of Long Island Saturday. So that's a feisty game. No on doubt. A <laughs> bunch of different levels. So man up here for Drexel with under two minutes to go in the first half. Skip pass. Low for Tomac, can't handle it. Loud is there for the ground ball. Christian Loud, first team all CAA long stick midfielder. And now Snowderbrook can kill off the penalty, so nothing there for Drexel. Yeah, Christian Loud actually leads Stony Brook in ground balls with 58, right? Pretty rare these days to have a non-faceoff guy lead your team in ground balls, but a huge one there for Stony Brook. And they'll take another timeout as we're back to even strength for just over a minute to go in the first half. Anthony Gallardi wants to talk things over and try to get one more here before the break, get some momentum. Now we will step aside here on Lacrosse TV. Well, remember, you can check out Lacrosse TV's watch party on our YouTube page. We've got playlists featuring dozens of instant classics with all the CAA teams, including all the drama from the men's and women's conference championships. Plus, you get great interviews with players and coaches who give us behind-the-scenes insights into those moments. It's the Lacrosse TV watch party. Watch it on YouTube. A couple of years ago, Drexel had quite the moment back in 2019 in the semifinals. They went into UMass as the four seed. And the four seeded Dragons knocked off the top seed Minutemen. They would then go on to the CAA championship game before the run ended with a loss to Towson. But one of the great moments of Ross Blumenthal's young career when he was just a freshman made a couple of huge stops in that game to finish off the upset of UMass. Love that. Those core memories, he'll carry that with him for the rest of his life for sure start of what has been a quite a career and goal that has extended longer than maybe he ever thought with the <laughs> COVID year and you got guys who've been playing a lot of college lacrosse yeah and it, and it leads to some really really quality play right these guys are a little bit older maybe you know took a year off to watch a lot more film hone their skills and just across the board of division one and even into division three the quality of play is fantastic pass just a little off Turned over. There's enough time for Drexel. Yep. Liam Kammer. Sophomore short short stick D mini. They get it across midfield. Still got to go in a hurry. Ah. Uh, is that pass too tall? And that should just about do it for this first half. Well, Drexel showing some life. Obviously scoring two straight there which were really big, I think, you know, six is a manageable deficit, especially when you have a hot face-off guy, but certainly need to tighten it up defensively. Dylan Man. Palinetti is trying to claim that that was a shot from his goalie. <laughs> Say, yeah, I backed it up. They're instead not going to believe that. And our first half comes to an end. So 10 straight goals for the Seawolves. That is the difference as Drexel bookends the half with two goals at the beginning, two goals at the end, but it's the 10 in the middle that has Stony Brook in control. They lead 10-4 here at the half. Second half for you in a bit, but for now it's halftime. You're watching the CAA Men's Lacrosse Championships on Lacrosse TV. You know, Stony Brook waited a long time to play in the postseason. They were not eligible to play in the American East Tournament last year, so... They had to wait, despite the fact they would have qualified. No go. Well, they are making the most of their first half in the CAA tournament as Anthony Gallardi's team has a 10-4 to lead here at the break as we get ready for the start of the third quarter of our second semifinal here at the CAA Men's Lacrosse Championships. Travis Eldridge, Marcus Holman back with you. And Marcus Drexel bookended that half with 
two goals on the front end, two goals in the back. But in the middle, it was all Stony Brook as they scored 10 in a row. It was impressive. Yeah, all Stony Brook. They were just clicking really, really well offensively, sharing the ball. You know, Jonathan Huber, I think, had a hat trick. You know, Palinetti getting involved a little bit. Matt Anderson doing an awesome job feeding. We had a really, really nice give-and-go play with Button and uh, Noah Armitage. And, yeah, just really clicking, playing with that emotion that, you know, Coach Gallardi wanted his team to play with and, and seizing the moment and, you know, took up a chunk of that first half uh, in a pretty dominating fashion. You know, Stony Brook has not been to a conference title game since 2016. That was when they lost to Vermont in the America East Championship game, trying to end that streak and find a way to Saturday with for a date with Delaware. But if you watch the first meeting between these two, you know that Drexel can score. They scored 15 goals the first time to, these two teams met. They're going to need some more fireworks. They want to get back in this. But with Justin Joseph at the faceoff X, you just never know. It's Joseph back there against Declan Mitchell. Mitchell actually had some success early against Joseph, but Joseph kind of figured it out. And we've got a whistle, and this will go toward Drexel to start the third. Yep, and, and nothing really glaring statistically. You know, for either team, I think McLaughlin had with his eight saves. I think that's probably, you know, a big difference in the game right now. He's at 66 percent. Blumenthal only at 33. Right. So, you know, some good goalie play out of Stony Brook is only really the different differentiating stat. Here's Tomac. He scored those back to back goals at the end of the first half that hit the. Maybe I think McLaughlin. McLaughlin got a piece of that off his yeah. knee, maybe. Yeah. Really bounced away, but it resets the shot clock. Hooley, Semple, Donnelly, the starting attack unit. Just the one goal from Hooley that came right at the start. Mulcahy, the skip pass. Good matchup here for Drexel. Donnelly on a short stick. Yeah, he finds the cage as well. Did he oh. go into the crease? He did. Just tough on those low angle shots. You just got to be mindful of your feet around the crease. And again, those are those are just penalties that are that are tough. I mean, because Drexel would have kept the possession there, but. Because he goes in the crease, gives it back to Stony Brook, and the Seawolves offense takes the field for the first time in this second half. A couple of assists for Matt Anderson as he gets a full head of steam, gives it up again. Now Button to Huber. He is a catch-and-shoot guy, the transfer from St. John's. Yeah, Second. Huber's slick. He's got good hands in there. He's he's always doing a nice job finding just pockets. Really knows how to move well off the ball. That ball comes all the way back in midfield. It's over uh -oh. and back. So each team with a turnover to start the third. Let's see if Mulcahy got can get going. numbers here. Numbers. Semple. Oh, he lost it. Michael right Sabella. In. Yeah. With the approach of a lifetime there. Absolutely love it. Stick out. Just completely neutralizing Drexel when they had an advantage. Oh, my gosh. Oh, great Holy. one from Renan Huber. He's got four. And I talked about Huber being like a sneaky off-ball guy and finding space. Well, he had a ton of space there. <laughs> and when you're that kind of player, your teammates just have a knack to throw you the ball. They trust you. we got to find who made that pass. That was a dime. It was Dane Retta, the junior short stick D midi. He just, you know, spots him. First point of the year for Dane. It's a good time for it. Tenth game of the season. Yeah. Yard sale again. We've seen all sorts of 
things for sale on the <laughs> turf at Delaware Stadium. Stony Brook just active defensively with their sticks. Sticks out, disrupting Drexel's offensive players. That that approach from Sabella was was really, really quality stuff there. They're doing this without Dylan Palanetti having recorded a point. Yeah, crazy. I mean, there's, it gives you an idea just how deep this offensive unit is for Stony Brook. We talk a lot about Delaware. Stony Brook is showing they've got a lot of depth offensively as well. Yep. And guys that play well together, they really just move the ball. Here's Palanetti, shoots wide. Rare right handed take from Palanetti. Skip pass across to Sean Carlo. And he goes upstairs. Just his fifth goal of the season back-to-back -to, -back to start this second half for Stony Brook, and they're back up eight. Yep, Carlo in with that second midfield unit. Caleb Pearson in there. And this is when you know things are going well, when your second midline can produce like that. you know. And, and Carlo just wins his matchup there at the point of attack. Luke Carden on defense, just a little bit late on his approach. And Carlo just muscles his way to like four yards and just buries the rock. Face-off win for the Dragons. They just haven't found enough offense. The possession hasn't been the problem. Joseph now nine of 16, or excuse me, he's won a couple here. He's into double digits. Well over 50% on the day. But things like this, another turnover. Yep. Just sloppy there. I think that was maybe fully on that initial dodge. Now Button Company will settle it down. Last couple of weeks is... Stony Brook offense has flip-flopped a couple of guys, Balin and Button. Button was playing in the midfield. He's now bumped down to attack, and they've used Balin here in the midfield, and both of them with two goals apiece tonight. Yep. Coach Gallardi met, mentioned that this week. It's been a good change for them. Just, you know, sometimes late in the season after, you know, playing lacrosse for eight, nine months since August, changing stuff up like that, you know, not only does it spark something for your team, but I think just individually it can change how guys feel and attack oh, bracket. Man. Right on cue. Huber has a five spot, and that was another beautiful feed. And Huber's staking his claim now as Stony Brook's second leading goal scorer behind Palinetti. It reminds me a little bit. I know this might be a weird comparison of Dane Doby. <laughs> okay great hands lefty finisher little stocky knows how to find the back of the net for sure i mean this is a guy in jonathan huber transfer from st john's scored 40 goals last season which tied a st john's program record for most of the season it was second team all big east that was a grad transfer comes here to stony brook and Obviously, with Dylan Palinetti filling it up, like you've got to find your your spot on that offense, and it feels like now here late in the year, he certainly is doing that. Yeah, you can't have five lefty attackmen, right, that all <laughs> right. do the same thing. So, you know, working his way into the lineup and carving out a way to score goals. But to your point, right, you score 40 goals at any level, <laughs> you're doing something right, and that skill translates, no doubt, so fitting in really nicely with the Stony Brook offense, obviously. Any word on the call there for I, I'm maybe a... just trying to figure that out. I have not gotten Ooh. it. Well, it leads to a Jack Mulcahy goal. He's on the board. Mulcahy with that left to right split. That was super clean. I mean, that's the stuff where 
why he was the offensive player of the year in this conference last year. I mean, yeah. he's got moves. And he's he's going to have to be just a little bit more aggressive with his approach here. If Drexel wants to claw back into this game. I like that he got to his spot, 10 yards, let that thing rip on the fly. And Joseph, or excuse me, no, that was uh, Stony Brook who went early. Drexel get another back, try to continue to find their way back into this. Yep. Still a lot of time. Nine minutes to go in this third quarter. Somehow, Cooley's still standing after that. Mulcahy shoots high and wide. Tony Brook just, I feel like they've just been really physical on ball and approaching with their sticks out. Right? I know I mentioned that on the couple possessions ago, but really just doing a nice job of controlling their matchups individually for the most part. Here's Sean Donnelly. He, we have not said his name a lot. He draws a flag. And so we'll have a man up coming for Drexel, something that has not really worked to their favor this so far tonight. Yeah, yeah. Really taking advantage of any of them. That was good offense, though, by Drexel. Sharing it, finding a matchup. Donnelly lowers his shoulder and just draws a cross check here. Did he step in the crease? It was close. Dane Rita, just a little bit too high on the shoulder there. So six on five here for Drexel. Got to continue to take advantage of any of these opportunities you get. Curcio on this near side wing. Donnelly here at the top of the box. Tomac on the far side. Donnelly's looking to feed. They've got, there's Mulcahy, but McLaughlin reads it. Nice job by McLaughlin just matching stick on stick, right? Mulcahy drops his stick down low, tries to beat him with speed and, and power there. McLaughlin able to match. Stony Brook going to kill off the rest of this penalty. Get themselves back to even strength and have a chance to add to this eight goal advantage. Now we're back to even. Pass. Had some heat on it. Now Anderson gets free. Lifted the stick just at the right time to send that shot high. And I liked Anderson going over the top that time. He's gone underneath a bunch to feed. I like him changing it up, trying to get to the middle. Feed inside. Huber tried to spin and get that lefty shot off. It's deflected. And now they set up the clear, Patrick Udovich and company. Nice ground ball by George Grippo there. Number 17, short stick on Drexel. Got numbers. Dragons trying to take advantage, and Donnelly does. He's on the board as well. Mulcahy again on the feed, right? Starting to get a little bit of juice. I feel like the you know in the in the regular season game and maybe throughout the season Drexel's transition is is somewhat of a strength for them. So if they can get out and run, obviously you've got to get stops to create transition. <laughs> but if they can get them, I like them in between the lines running and gunning. No, you're right, and I mean obviously turnovers at times here today hasn't been a bright spot for Drexel, but this is a team that can run.
Another opportunity here for the Dragon. Well, Kehi sets a good screen. Picks up the short stick matchup. And Stony Brook gets the help. Skip pass out to Donnelly. McLaughlin goes low. Great offense. And again, it's, you know, your top dogs for Drexel right now are, are starting to make some plays. But McLaughlin just able to close the door, right? If you think about Mulcahy's shot on man up and then that shot Donnelly just had, almost identical, right? Dropping your hands low and shooting low to low. If you're able to, as a player on the fly, recognize that, and maybe that's a coach's job too, is just be like, hey, guys, if you drop your hands low, you've got to bring it back up top. Just make those subtle adjustments as shooters. Nice check. Good defense. Right at the last second. That was timed perfectly. It's Connor McVicker. Drexel starting to play just with some more pace here. Obviously, they, you know, we're getting down to it now where we're going to have to start making some plays pretty much every possession. So, it's Curcio. There we Passes. go. And another stop by McLaughlin. That time he robbed Hooley. And Stony Brook wins the race. McLaughlin is pumped. He is hype. Taking a couple off the knees there. I think him and Donnelly have some Look words out. for each other. Sabella went <laughs> went to the ground to, to make that catch. And now he turns on the Jets. Sabella's like a Tasmanian devil. He's... I feel like he's all, all all gas, no brakes. Here's Grippo. Got numbers, two on one here. Cammer. Uh, flag is down on the far side of the field, so another man up coming for Drexel. Once again, they haven't taken advantage of many of those situations. Not exactly sure what the penalty is. It, I don't see seven guys for Stony Brook, so not an offsides. Thinking maybe a slash during that scrum. And if, oh my gosh. Jeez. We have seen some incredible takeaway checks tonight. This has been a defenseman's dream. Somebody's <laughs> caused her. Get, get Uncle Rick Beardsley on the line. <laughs> I think that was maybe 55. Was that Sean Conk? I think it was Sean Conk. I think you're right. With a little can opener action. I'm you know, I don't know a lot about defense, but I will say defensemen that play with their sticks out in front of them usually find success <laughs> playing defense. Too often you'll see some players play with their stick at their hip or their stick up in the air, if you just put it out in offensive players' gloves, trust me, from experience, <laughs> very annoying. Spoken from the source. <laughs> Had a fake flip there behind. Tomac, long-range shot, and McLaughlin has been on it. And you Double. got numbers now. Oh, baby. 12 saves now for J-Mo. Oh. off the post. He wanted Man. that. That was a that was about a ten yard crow hop. Christian Loud making some noise with that shot, and probably the right decision because you see David Estrella there picking the ball up. When you're man down, usually you have a D midi up at the midfield line because you're not ready for a fast break. So that D midi ends up being the point. On that 4v3 fast break, who I guarantee you he is not practicing any repetitions of that <laughs> during practice. So you're better off probably shooting it, or you could probably throw out the Dylan Palinetti too. That's also a good option. Here's Balin, who's passed a little off for Button. Another turnover. Stony Brook a little bit sloppy here, past couple possessions. I mean, they had been so sharp. Yeah.
Drexel just has not been able to really make much headway. Trailing three to two in this quarter. Six goal deficit at the half is gone up to seven. Second midfield on for Drexel. Just trying to find something that'll keep providing a spark. They need a lot of them. Scandone oh. shoots wide. Sick. He might have gotten a piece of that, I think. Yeah. Look at McLaughlin. 10 yards out of the cage, directing traffic. I love it. He's up to 12 saves now. I'm definitely feeling it. And Travis, I, I, I can definitely tell from here that everything low Oof. he is gobbling up. That one rang off the crossbar. That thing had some heat on it way out toward the Stony Brook sideline off the bar for Mulcahy. Good move. Uh, McLaughlin is there to help intercept it. Wow. That a cost her. Oh, I think he's... Did he? Him and Donnelly have been jawing all night. I think he bumped him there. He's yeah. He's was... for a moving pick. Yeah. <laughs> or interference. I kind of caught that out of the corner of my eye on that last clear. Donnelly ran up after McLaughlin was celebrating, kind of gave him a little jab, and then looked like McLaughlin. They always got get the get second one. Yeah. Sample oh, inside. That's fight. off the bar. Jeez. Somebody Drexel's measure. offense definitely playing better than it did in the first half, <laughs> but combination of McLaughlin and the and the pipes. Denying them a chance to run this tally up. You can't do that. Pass low. McLaughlin. There you go again, Donnelly. right? You see, do you see that? They're, they got their feet tangled. Yeah, this is. Keep an eye on that. Love a little goalie shooter battle. Yeah. Here's Armitage looking on the backside. He had button. He just took his eye off of it. Up ahead to Semple. Time winding down on this third you quarter. Go, yeah. Drexel needs one. Nice. Oh. I thought he had Donnelly inside. Instead, it's McLaughlin <laughs> again. He is ha he is in the head of these Drexel shooters. No doubt. So through three quarters, Stony Brook is 15 minutes away from a trip to their first ever CAA championship game. You score 13 to 6 after three. You're watching the CAA men's lacrosse championships on Lacrosse TV. The CAA Men's Lacrosse Championship is brought to you by Jersey Mike's, a sub above. And by Ticket Smarter, the official ticket resale partner of the CAA. Think smarter, think Ticket Smarter. Back here at Delaware Stadium, 15 more minutes to decide this one. Stony Brook with a commanding lead here over Drexel, 13 to six, as the Seawolves look to punch their ticket to their first ever CAA championship game, competing here in their first ever tournament in their first season in the league. And it's... Once again, Mitchell and Joseph at the face-off X here to start this fourth quarter. Travis Eldridge, Marcus Holman back with you. Big collision. Ooh. Huber. Look out. Oh. And then he takes a That's shot, and they get yeah. Greenwald on that one. Could see that coming from a mile away. Obviously, some... Frustrate, frustration building up. Dylan Palanetti puts it back in play. He does not have a goal tonight. 42 consecutive games. Dylan Palanetti has scored. Something to keep an eye on here in the fourth quarter. As badly as I'm sure that he wants to score. He'll I know take the win. I know he'll take the win and a chance to compete for a championship. 
for no sure. Doubt. But it is the longest active streak in the country, Mark. Yeah, yeah, I know. We, <laughs> you know. I think he might have maybe heard us up in the booth. Looks like he wants to take a run here. Uses the screen. Got the LSM melee on him. Stony Brook content to obviously take long possessions, use the clock. Huber shoots wide. He's going for the six pack. <laughs> They got Pal Palinetti at X. 15 seconds of the shot clock. I bet he shoots here. Trying to get back to that left hand. He can't. Now he gives it up to Button. Four seconds. And he's going to do the smart thing. Good thing you didn't take my bet, Travis. <laughs> <laughs> no shot from Palinetti. And a nice defensive stop from Drexel. Stony Brook, obviously, they were, you know, red hot to your point, Travis, in the first half. They've definitely cooled off here. And the difference maker's been Jamison McLaughlin in cage. Yeah, that was coming into the coming into this game at 51%, right? Just a hair above 50. He's 68% tonight, 13 saves. And maybe a little bit of a mental game, too, for a couple of the Drexel. Scores. That's Tomax a, steps down. He's got three. Tomax been able to solve him. Similar shot. Three quarter release to the lower part of the cage. Just about to say, McLaughlin. Five of those thirteen saves coming in that third quarter, really helping shut the door. But not so fast as Luke Tomac. All right, so you're down by six. 12.50 left. You need a goal every two minutes. And you need to close the door on Stony Brook. Not impossible. You need a couple of quick ones. Yep, which they are keen to do. They can push transition and win faceoffs. Well, give and go with McVicker, and he's got another. There it is. There we go. Connor McVicker, the short stick D midi. Says I can play offense too. Coach, let me cook. I love this give and go. This is great. Early face off offense. And McVicker makes it count. Smart timeout too here by uh, Coach Gallardi. I think just trying to eliminate any hope of a run before it gets the three straight goals. But Drexel coming out hot in the fourth. So a timeout here on the field. We'll take it as well. 12.40 to go in this fourth quarter. Stony Brook 13, Drexel 8. Well, make sure you don't miss Lacrosse TV's coverage of the men's and women's CAA Lacrosse Championships coming your way live Saturday, starting with the women's championship game, 12.30 Eastern time. Chris Marshall, Kylie O'Miller on the call for that one. Then at 3.30, the men's CAA championship here from Delaware, the Blue Hens playing the winner of this one. Marcus and I on the call again for that one. CEA Championship Saturday right here on Lacrosse TV. Should be a terrific Saturday as Joseph is trying to keep Drexel in contention to play back here Saturday afternoon. 13-8 game, but back-to-back -back goals for Drexel. So get them back within five. Yep, and Joseph's completely taken over this game from a face-off perspective. 16 out of 23 now in favor of Drexel. He got Tomac again. This time Ooh. McLaughlin got it. I would have loved if Tomac maybe try to bring that one up top just to change it up after scoring twice there in a similar shooting location. McLaughlin, nice read. Stays Drexel ball, though, in the backup. And That's there's wide. another. Augustine goes up top, and it's a four-goal game. All righty. Well, since I spoke, it's been 
52 seconds, and we've scored three goals. So they're ahead of schedule. <laughs> ahead of schedule is right. Stony Brook just no help there on the invert. I just remember back to Saturday in that must-win game for Stony Brook to get into this tournament against Hofstra. They led 11-6. to They would give up four goals there in the second half. It got down to 11-10, and then they held on in the final two-plus minutes with the one-goal edge. You oh, know, man. That, that is not a trend that you want your team to have going into playoff lacrosse. No, you know Anthony Gallardi is it, it, those the timeouts he's taken have been timed. It feels like purposeful, purposefully, so that they can try to stop some of that momentum that they had seen last weekend. Well, it's it's officially shifted here. I mean, Drexel's they're playing with with speed, and you know they know that if they score, they're going to get the ball back. So, still a lot of time. And, yeah, no doubt. Waller, oh, oh, just a little off for Mulcahy. It looked like he was kind of screened by a couple of sticks being yeah, up in the passing lane. And Waller kind of has that low release where he shoots from. So, wow, simple on the ride. And he get it out of bounds. Oh, my gosh. No, it's sent toward the middle. Sabella. Oh, my goodness. That's a huge ground ball. Might have saved a goal. Wow. That was huge. Just floating it back toward the middle of the field. And Michael <laughs> Sabella makes reckless the reckless there in the clear, no <laughs> doubt. And that, that's exactly what coaches tell you not to do. And this is a huge possession for Stony Brook's offense, right? Super potent in the first half. They've they've gone very quiet here. You know, get your guys involved. Look for Huber on the crease. Palinetti off a of ball movement, always a good option. Here he is on a shorty. Got to go to this. Beats his man for second. Now Palinetti sweeping across, shoots high. Yeah, goal here stops every all the momentum Drexel has. It yep. stops it dead in its trap. Armitage rolls. Big I think save. Blumenthal came up with it. It's a big ground ball, and it's a hold on Stony Brook. Will Button can't believe it. I don't think that's a good call. I, <laughs> it seemed like he checked his stick. They're both going after a 50-50 ground ball. Like, Not quite sure what the official saw, but obviously enough to call a hold. So another chance for Drexel. 13 to 9. Three straight goals for the Dragons. Get this back within four. As close as they've been in the second half. As close as Drexel's been since it was 6 2. Part of 10 straight goals for Stony Brook. Tomac, the jump shot. And they give it to Mulcahy on the backup. Tomac's definitely been getting to his spots as a Dodger, whether it's on a short stick or a pole, he's going hard to that right hand and getting to the middle of the field. Mulcahy. Got to help out here. Got to slide. Trying to get inside there. Tiptoes the crease. And it's loud. The first team all-conference LSM who comes up with the ground ball and draws the flag. Man, it's just been been a tough night for for Sean Donnelly. Just one goal. You kind of have sensed it in his body language a little bit. Again, just yeah, just being a little too aggressive on the ride. That's just sometimes it's not your night, and those angles and timing of things is just a little bit off. Just sensed that way for Sean as he draws a, a tough penalty. Right. You, those are the penalties, you know, you're 100 yards away from defending your goal. So you want to try and limit those penalties as far from your goal as possible. So it's a man up for Stony Brook. Yeah. 
Caminiti top the box. High for Armitage, but he secures it. Skip pass intercepted. George Grippo. You got a trailer. Yep. One more. Looking for a man inside. Ooh. Shoots high. Let's see where they give the backup to. I think it is Drexel. Do we have a flag maybe behind the play? I believe we do. We're getting a little helter skelter here in the fourth, Travis. It's CAA after dark, 10 30 on the <laughs> East Coast here. Way past my bedtime. We appreciate you staying up late with us, Marcus. <laughs> Anything. Ball is life. So here we go. Another man up opportunity for Drexel. They haven't had a lot of success. Nobody has against Stony Brook, by the way, this year. 80, almost 85% this man down unit. For Stony Brook, that's best in the country. Best in the country, yep. Tomac steps into one, hooks it high. Got to give props to the uh, Stony Brook scout man up team, too. For sure. Getting a lot of different looks. Mulcahy he fakes and he scores. Wow. His second of the night, and it's a three-goal game. Donnelly and uh, Mulcahy have a really nice connection on man up. They, they do a, a good job of looking for each other. I thought Mulcahy faked his way out of an angle here. But he's able to finish. Cut this lead to three. Mulcahy, by the way, quietly now has six points on two goals and four assists. Pretty nice night at the office for Jack Mulcahy as they got Joseph going early. Stonebrook will now take their time with this. Just past the midway point of the fourth. Game is as close as it has been since the first half and Stony Brook was on that 10 goal run I agree you want to take your time Travis but I also think you've got to get guys involved and you got to play second level offense right so continue to draw slides move the ball this is a great matchup Palinetti has the short stick on him you know he wants to get back to his left hand Drexel read it well Balin. Nice job on ball. Balin continues to dodge. He shoots wide. Tate Kienzo on ball there. Doing a really nice job. Number 46. Winning that matchup for sure. It's button to put it back in play. Down to 10 seconds on this shot clock. Button, observing, absorbing checks from Carden. Now Good it's defense. taken away. It's like it's been a different defensive unit for Drexel here in the fourth quarter. Yeah, just, again, I go back to it because we, we watched a game right before this, but Delaware came out of halftime just like really dictating the tempo to the offense instead of sitting back. I like the way that Drexel's helped each other, supported Right, and then again, it's just sometimes you just got to win your matchups, right? Augustine. Ball sent behind. Mulcahy, midfielder, inverts. Now he's got Semple with him. Semple's got a shorty. Here's Tomac, gets the screen. Jump shot, oh. and McLaughlin, I think, got a piece of that. Yep, they got a reset call. I didn't hear any iron. 14 saves now. Stonybrook's needed all of them. 
Yep. Double shorty. We got an invert behind. Augustine sends it back out to Tomac. Now Casey Waller scored a goal early. Got to go. Got to slide. Mulcahy tries to shuffle it across to Semple. Almost came up with it. Now he does come up with it. Oh. Yeah, he lost it again. Mili Estrella oh my comes gosh. away. Look at that speed. You got to push it here. Jets. Take your opportunity. Opportunity oh. off the crossbar. Estrella with that breakaway speed. Holy cow. Yeah, he's showing off all of speed he's got in the arsenal. And now you, now you, is when you can start to just slow it down for Stony Brook, and you can almost pace this game out now where you get maybe one or two more stops. That'll lock it up. Mulcahy had Semple there on that invert look. Stony Brook did a nice job just collapsing down and, and disrupting the pass and then coming up with that second chance ground ball. Oh, my gosh. Armitage, uh, it stays out from Blumenthal. Greenwald has to get out of trouble. He does. So four minutes to go. Drexel still trails by three. Grippo brings it across midfield. A 4 nothing Drexel run in this fourth quarter. They've held the Seawolves off the scoreboard in the final frame. Tomac, full head of steam. Probably going back to the invert here, or Big Little. They've had some good looks out of that. They go right back to it. Mulcahy. Yep, good pick. It's the screen from Semple. Trying to roll back on the crease. Great battle. Good defense. Mulcahy time somehow out, still out, has the ball. Out. No timeout. Dang. And it's Dan Newton who picks it up. Newton, really nice job there on ball. Stony Brook will lead off, eat away another minute plus as we are under three minutes to play. Stony Brook, we mentioned they haven't been to a conference championship game since 2016 when the Went on to play Vermont in the America East Championship. However, it must be something about their first ever conference tourneys as Palinetti goes to work. Back in 2002, their first ever season in the America East, they went on and won the America East Tournament. Huh. Trying to do the same thing here in the CAA. Blumenthal with his oh. stop. I don't know if that a ever actually got to him. But either way, Drexel, one last hurrah here. Got to go quick. Get one. Maybe you got a shot. Time yeah, we're going to have a Dragons yep. timeout. Yep, anything's possible, right? I think I'm not quite sure what year it was. Maybe 2015, Drexel scored like three goals in 11 seconds on the <laughs> faceoffs. My memory dates me a little bit what year that would be, but anything's possible, especially when you're winning faceoffs. We saw, I, th I think it was Denver in uh, one of our games of the week when they were playing Towson here earlier this uh, earlier this season. I believe they scored three goals in about 11 seconds thanks to some quick faceoff wins. So any it's anything is possible, but you got to get one more here just to – Give yourself a chance. This is a huge possession for the Dragons. They trail by three. It's a Drexel team. And, and this this game kind of embodies what this season is is felt like it's looks like. Like it's been a it's been a season where at times, like you see in this this four goal run for the Dragons, it's like nobody can stop them. And other times they struggle. And that has been the roller coaster for head coach Brian Volker and company. Yeah. And he was and he was open to that and he admitted it. Again, you know, we talked about the face-offs at times, like masking, you know, a problem with turnovers. 
Um, you know, tonight, again, they've essentially dominated at the faceoff X, but, you know, they have 16 turnovers as well. So um, just dug themselves a little bit too big of a hole in the first half. But like I said, we've seen crazier things happen. You know, you get a quick one out of this timeout, you're down two, win the next faceoff score, and then anything can happen. What are you drawing up here, Travis? What do you think? Wow, you're asking me? I should, <laughs> I should be asking you. I mean, I, Luke Tomac or Jack Mulcahy yep. have been your your two guys so far tonight. Yep, definitely. Want, oh, my gosh. Tomac almost, almost lost it at midfield. Definitely want the ball in one of their two sticks. I'd like the big little with Mulcahy. Here's Curcio looking inside. Backhand oh. shot. Curcio has the backup. Augustine with an acrobatic opportunity. I don't know if that's quite what Coach Stephen Boyle drew up in the huddle, a backhanded shot on the crease. Uh -oh. I don't believe so. Mulcahy, now Waller. Trying to run out of time. Waller, jump shot, and hit somebody on its way through. Got to get a bucket here. Donnelly. Wrap it around. That doesn't get by McLaughlin. Just over a minute to play, and Stony Brook can really start to sense it. Was last touch by Loud. Tomac, nice move. Augustine rolling in and McLaughlin with the stop and that should help seal it. The save and the selly while the ball's in its stick. A little fist pump. Melia Estrella oh, just going to heave it up in the air. Nice He's ball. Got his man. Balin. You know what we haven't had tonight though, Travis, is a Dylan Palinetti goal. It would be, if this does hold, which I'm assuming it will in the final 20 seconds, the first time in Dylan Palinetti's entire career wow. he's not scored in a game. That is crazy. Wow. I mean, that is in, in, in 42 straight games. It's going to come to an end here tonight. That is an incredible run for Dylan Palinetti. And I think he'll take a trip to the CAA championship game instead because that's what he's getting. He got flags down. A skirmish yep. here on the near side. This is not what we need. want to see. Anthony Gallardi, the Stony Brook head coach, comes in to break it up, and he's going to celebrate with his team. Yeah, emotions are running high, man. This is playoff lacrosse. Obviously, you don't want anything cheap. You know, it, it seemed like Drexel was a little bit frustrated at the end there, but... Stony Brook, first oh. year in the CAA, and they'll be advancing to their first conference championship. This was a couple of years in the making. They weren't eligible for the America East Championships last year. Well, they were eligible for the CAA tournament, and they're going to play all the way to the final day of the conference. They're headed to the CAA championship game. 13-10 winners over Drexel. They'll be Delaware on Saturday here at Delaware Stadium with the CAA championship on the line. We'll have our play of the game when we come back. Stony Brook, your winners here in the second semifinal. Back here at Delaware Stadium, wrapping up the second CAA men's lacrosse semifinal. Stony Brook, the three seed in this tournament, winners over the two seed Drexel, 13 to 10. So the Seawolves punched their ticket to the CAA championship game here at Delaware Stadium on Sunday. And they, of course, will meet the top seed, the host institution here in the CAA tournament 2023, the Delaware Blue Hens. In case you're wondering, in the regular season, pretty good game between those two, a 12-9 to Delaware win over the Seawolves, Marcus. So we should be in for a good one here on Saturday afternoon. Absolutely. You've got, you know, the number one seed, Delaware, trying to defend their crown. And you've got Stony Brook coming in, you know, into uh, enemy territory, trying to take it away and win their first ever CAA championship. So 
storylines are great. I think we're going to have some firepower with, with offensive personnel and maybe a high scoring output. Yeah, it could be a lot of fun here on Saturday afternoon. Well, it's before we let you go, it's time for tonight's sub above play of the game presented by Jersey Mike. Stony Brook, the, most of their goals came in this first half, just three after halftime. This one from Will Button, part of a 10-goal run on the beautiful give-and-go. Absolutely, and this just kind of defines, I think, who Stony Brook wants to be offensively, just – a really, really crisp passing team, you know, guys that can beat their defenders off the dodge, but then can also be slick and savvy and time up cuts. So, you know, incredible give and go there. Rarely do you see a give and go with a pass behind the cage like that. So that was a pretty awesome one. And that is tonight's sub above play of the game presented by Jersey Mike's. And that's going to do it for us here at our semifinal coverage from lacrosse TV. Your final here in the second semi Stony Brook 13, Drexel 10. So it'll be Stony Brook and Delaware in the CAA Men's Lacrosse Championship on Saturday afternoon, 3.30 p.m. Eastern time here at Delaware Stadium on Lacrosse TV. Marcus and I will see you then. But for now, we say so long for our entire Lacrosse TV crew. And Marcus Holman, I'm Travis Eldridge saying so long from Delaware. We'll see you Saturday.